Cyberpunk has been out for a while now. I've even made two videos on the topic, which is impressive for me at least. But there's one comparison being made that I found compelling enough to talk about, and that's people comparing Cyberpunk 2077's development to that of No Man's Sky. For anyone who doesn't know what No Man's Sky is, it's an exploration survival game by Hello Games that, like Cyberpunk 2077, was massively overhyped and overmarketed well before the intended release date. Sean Murray, the founder of the studio, would regularly go into interviews and effectively mislead customers into believing that the game was something it's not. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes. Wow. Sound familiar? Yeah. Cyberpunk 2077 had basically the same problem. No Man's Sky was an indie game that was seen to have the potential to be an industry-changing title, challenging the status quo of AAA game development. That also sounds familiar, since CD Projekt alluded to the exact same bullshit with Cyberpunk, and like Cyberpunk, No Man's Sky would showcase very, very little actual gameplay footage until the last minute, and most of what it showed was basically exploration. Turns out, No Man's Sky was crap! Wow. I've actually made a video on this before, but in short, there was a long list of promises on Reddit that Hello Games ultimately failed to deliver on, some of which Sean Murray was continuing to talk about at least a few months prior to release. In the years that followed No Man's Sky's underwhelming launch, Hello Games would ultimately improve the game on a massive scale, even going so far as to add the infamously promised multiplayer in full glory. Now, I don't think the game is ever going to be an industry-changing title, and it really didn't, nor has it ever changed the status quo of AAA game dev, but I would make an argument that it resembles the game Hello Games originally promised us, and for the people who are into that sort of thing, it's well worth looking into. So obviously there are some similarities with Cyberpunk 2077, an overhyped, overmarketed, overpromised, and ultimately underdelivered video game. But that's kind of where the similarities stop. And while it's easy to think that because of those similarities, the two scenarios are basically identical, there's a few key features that make Cyberpunk a significantly more bleak affair. The first key difference is considering if CDPR will actually improve the game on the same scale that Hello Games did. Like No Man's Sky, Reddit has compiled a growing list of promises that CDPR ultimately failed to deliver on, and while it's still too early to come to a total conclusion on how CDPR will deal with these, I think there's enough information to at least postulate on the differences. On the surface, I do believe that the scenarios between No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk are more or less identical. The key differences between the two titles is that Hello Games had nowhere near the same reputation that CDPR did when Cyberpunk came out. The only titles Hello Games had made prior to No Man's Sky was the Joe Danger series, which is a side-scroller and completely unlike No Man's Sky entirely. It's not a bad series from what little I've played of it, but it's not even remotely like No Man's Sky. CD Projekt Red, on the other hand, have the entire Witcher franchise, which is more or less a AAA title at this point and well known for being an extremely successful open world series. But even before this, they had a small reputation for selling old games under the moniker of Good Old Games, or GOG.com. It's important to note that No Man's Sky sold very well, likely owing to all the pre-orders from people who bought deep into the hype, and so the studio had at least two major directions to go in after the miserable post-launch reception. They could either buckle down and improve the game, or they could run off with the money, because running off with the cash is always an option. Who's going to sue them for false advertisement? You think the average gamer has enough for those kind of lawsuits? Because if they did, we'd have seen cases out of the ass for years, and not just for that reason. Like I said, Hello Games had fuck all reputation to go back on, and this is what put them in a much more precarious position than CD Projekt Readers in. Sean Murray and co could have fucked off with the money, but then what? Maybe they could have made another game and convinced people to buy that one, Peter Molyneux style. But what if they couldn't? What if they close up shop and now can't find work elsewhere? Best case scenario, they try to start up something new and hope nobody finds their names attached. That's a pretty shitty situation for the artists and programmers, because who wants to put that fucking train wreck on their resume? Oh yeah, I worked on that game that was a total flop, and then the company ran off with the money! <laughs> please, please hire me. Yeah. Real convincing. Basically, they have no immediate fallback. What makes it even harder is No Man's Sky was always going to be a niche game, and an indie company alienating a small, often dedicated fanbase isn't necessarily the best idea. These are usually the types of people to remember that crap. CD Projekt, on the other hand, don't have nearly as much to risk. Yes, the poor state of Cyberpunk has tarnished their reputation, 
a bit. But Cyberpunk is nowhere near as niche as No Man's Sky is. It has a bigger audience, and much of that audience aren't going to be like you and me, talking smack about crappy business practices and what-if scenarios. These are people who buy and play video games, but don't necessarily engage in anything like news, gaming politics, or any of the drama surrounding them. Worst case scenario, CDPR would still have their publishing sector and the Witcher franchise to fall back on, a franchise that, as said, was extremely successful and still well remembered to this day. I mean, if you can make an old book saga so popular it gets a Netflix series, then you're basically shitting gold. This is why the major studios such as Activision, Ubisoft and Electronic Arts can get away with so much anti-consumer bullshit and why they've gotten away with it for decades. Seriously, Electronic Arts has a very well documented history of ramping up the bullshit until people can't take it anymore and then, when people finally snap, they dial it back all the way down to zero for a few years before eventually they start ramping it up again. It's a never-ending cycle they've managed to make a consistently growing profit on for at least 30 years, because most people just don't care, and even if they do, there's always some new young sucker who just doesn't know any better. So CDPR, like Hello Games, could go back to the drawing board and slowly add in all the missing features that they promised would be in the game, but this seems really unlikely, not the least because some of these would require total revamps of the story and dialogue system, which is just not going to be economically viable, no matter how much good will it bring. But because the company doesn't have to. They just don't have to give a fuck. They're bigger than just Cyberpunk. And Cyberpunk is mainstream enough that plenty of people simply don't care. I care. Maybe you care. But unless you can convince all them Joe and Jane blogs to care, CDPR really don't have to. This is the fundamental difference. The fact is, the amount of companies that can sell you an idea and make hundreds of millions of dollars on that idea alone can be counted on one hand. Most studios cannot do what Cloud Imperium did with Star Citizen and crowdfund over $300 million by doing basically nothing. And that worked mainly because Chris Roberts had a solid reputation from a lot of people prior. Small indie companies like Hello Games have only made a few titles, none of which are even remotely related to the crap they're trying to push next, don't really have as much of a chance. Hello Games could have said fuck this and walked off, but who knows if Sean Murray could have worked in the industry again easily after doing so. Peter Molyneux had the benefit of actually making a few good games before he went completely off the deep end. Sean Murray? Eh, yeah, not so much. I mean, if he has an amazing contacts list, then honestly, he could probably do whatever he wants. Let's be honest, the cynic in me thinks that's probably the reason Molyneux managed to stay in the limelight somewhat for so fucking long in the first place. <sighs> in any case, as fun as it is to make these comparisons, and while I of all people would really love to see Cyberpunk made better, I wouldn't bet money on it. As always, my friends, my name is Mr. Tastics. Remember to smash the shit out of the like and subscribe button to see more of this stuff, and I'll see you all next time.